is going on you guys and welcome back to the channel and in this video we'll be kickstarting a short series on Elixir, so Elixir the programming language and we'll be going over like the basics of it, of it how to kind of um, get up and running with it, how to the sort of concepts that come with it, the features that come with it etc uh, and it's not really we're not going to do too much, we're not going to do anything too complex with the language in this series it's more just so you get an understanding of it. And I also want to make this as accessible to people who are very new to programming, who don't really have experience with other languages and are just interested or have come across the, the, the name or the programming language Elixir and just want to try it out. But to kind of address the elephant in the room, uh, the thing that is quite interesting about Elixir is that it's a functional programming language so if you are familiar with Python, Java, C++, or any of these kind of mainstream languages, then the I, then a lot of the concepts, or nearly all the concepts in OOP languages are not carried into functional programming languages. So Elixir is a functional programming language, Haskell is another, um, but Elixir is, is a fairly new one. I think it was released back in 2011. Uh, but the point of functional programming languages is, is there are many differences and if you haven't heard of that term then I definitely recommend uh, googling it and finding out what pro functional programming is as I don't really want to dive too much into definitions here but with functional programming essentially first of all we don't have any concept of classes so we can't create classes within functional programming and also where with functional programming is that we're building uh, software purely out, well out of pure functions purely out of pure functions so uh, that's two of like the major things with functional programming languages if we were to compare it with traditional ones like python or java etc but yeah so the other thing is if you've used like the latest version of javascript then you may have already come across some elements of functional programming as java like i think es6 and maybe es5 but ES6 definitely like has some has taken some things from functional programming and added it into JavaScript and it's becoming more and more popular now to kind of go into this whole functional programming paradigm and by paradigm I mean uh, functional programming is a programming paradigm because it's it encourages a different way of thinking when it comes to writing your code. So that's basically what Elixir is, is that it's a functional programming language. And here on the homepage, it gives like a nice little description of what the language is all about and the kind of companies that make use of it. And the homepage also gives like some nice information on the features that come with Elixir, such as scalability, fault tolerance, and the fact that it's a functional programming language. And it says here that functional programming promotes a coding style that helps developers write code that is short, concise, and maintainable. So I guess it's kind of a promo for functional programming, makes sense. Um, but the other thing that is great with functional programming is that they're very easy to test because you're basically just building uh, a software out of just functions. You don't have to care about classes. You don't care about any of that sort of stuff. It's mainly just functions. Um, and some other things which we'll get into later on, I don't want to mention now. It's better to just show that through example. But to install it, we can have a, head over to elixir-lang.org forward slash install.html and uh, you have these distributions so pick the one that's relevant for you mine's macOS, and it's very very simple to just install elixir in fact i think it's definitely one of the easiest installations when it comes to a programming language in that you really don't have to do anything you just have to run these commands so you can run brew install elixir so over here in the terminal if i just add some room um, it's basically just yeah brew install elixir and you can hit enter and it'll get going if you're on mac os you have another option which is sudo uh, mac ports uh, i've already installed it and yeah it was a delightful experience there's no extra setup that you have to do and then you have the linux distributions so if you're using ubuntu then you have these kind of options oops and finally for windows as windows is kind of infamous for installing languages and kind of all the uh, jargon or bureaucracy even that comes with it uh, with elixir it's very easy from what i've read there's you just have to download the installer 
run, like as it says, click next, next, and then voila, you have Elixir installed. You don't have to do any path configuration or anything like that. It's just straight install. But that's really it. That's how uh, you can do it. And if you're using Raspberry Pi, or if you're interested in adding um, Elixir to Docker, then you can always do this as well. But yeah, that's really the installation. Now we'd go ahead and look at how to create uh, a Elixir project and writing our very first Hello World application. So once you've installed it, you can go over to your terminal and just to check that you've installed it properly, you can type in elixir-v and you should get a message like this along with the version of Elixir that you're using. So in my case is 1.11.4. So depending on when you're watching this, I guess that may have changed. But yeah, that's just to check that it's working. And we can enter the Elixir interactive, interactive shell. Uh, so we can type in IEX, if you type that in. And here we can start writing Elixir code straight away. So we can do some basic stuff like one plus one and we get two we can um, do like variable assignments and we'll get into like how variable assignments work with elixir this known is called pattern matching um, and that's what you would say instead of variable assignment but we could say a equals one now we have that um, and if you hit a we can um, yeah we, we get one as a return but that's really that and to kind of leave it is uh, control A and then abort. I'll just clear that. Oops. And to start the project or to create a project, so um, move into the directory that you're in, you can type in mix, new, and we'll be creating a to-do list, uh, command line to-do list app. Um, and yeah, like I'll explain how that will work uh, over the next few videos. Um, but Right now, uh, you want to name it to-dos. And if you want to name it after the folder that you're in, so I'm in like this directory, Elixir series, dash series. In order to re uh, name it after that and to create that um, the project inside of it, you just have to click dot and then hit enter. Otherwise, um, we'd stick with to-dos like so. And then you'll get all this creating readme, uh, git ignore. So it comes with quite a few nice things like uh, the readme and git ignore. Uh, it comes with uh, like our library and this is where we'll be writing our code uh, and like a test um, folder as well. So now if you click, uh, if you type in ls, uh, you'll see this folder here, to-dos, and we can move into to-dos and here you'll have like your files and folders and uh, to get like, uh, to get into VS code, I have like code and then dot, and I'll open VS Code within this folder. And there we go. We have uh, our um, Elixir code and um, our Elixir project. And one thing I would recommend installing is um, if you type in Elixir, and if you're using VS Code, uh, I would uh, encourage you to install this. So Elixir support and debugger. It's nice for formatting, so it formats it for you. Uh, and it does code highlighting, etc. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a, I definitely recommend it. But yeah, aside from that, we have now the Elixir uh, project. So we'll be writing all our code in here, and it comes with a um, like uh, already like some module. But you can see here this, um, and I'll just zoom in just to make this more clear. Um, but we see here the def module, and this is where with Elixir, when it comes to writing code, we'll be writing functions with inside modules. So there will just be modules and within modules, you'll have functions. So this here creates or defines a module that's called to do's. And then within here, we already have like a function that comes with it, which is hello. And uh, this is what a documentation will look like if you were to add that in, but we can remove that for now and we'll remove this too. And there you go. So now that we have this, we can also, we can head back to our command line um, and let's just clear this. And uh, to kind of get the project running. So obviously we haven't written any code, but to run this project, we can type in 
um, IEX dash, oops, dash S and then mix. And there we go. We were back into the interactive Elixir shell um, and we now have access to to do's like so. And uh, we don't have any kind of methods that come with it. Uh, just to do's. But now we can go ahead and write uh, a function. Sorry if I keep saying methods and functions. When I say methods, I mean functions in this case, um, as that is the more appropriate name. So to write a function, we can go ahead and do def to define, and let's do one call hello world. And uh, the kind of styling in which um, uh, Elixir has is snake case, and then we can say do. And if you have like the Elixir um, extension and you type do and then enter, then this automatically, the end automatically appears. And we can just write traditional hello world, like so. And now if we go back here, because we've added something new, um, right now it still has the old version of to-do. So if we type in to-do's um, and then do dot and try and run this function, hello underscore world, we get undefined function error, which is now like our first error in uh, Elixir. But to kind of refresh it and uh, say, and tell like the Elixir interface or the Elixir shell that we've, uh, we've made changes and we want you to uh, know that, we all, all we have to do is type in recompile and it recompiles it. So now if we do to do's dot, and we can even hit tab. So like show us what we have. Mix projects, we won't be focusing on that, but we it now knows that we have hello world. So we can type in hello world and we get the return hello world. So if you come from like Python or uh, like a OOP language, then what you usually have is like a return like that. But with Elixir, it by default, it returns the last uh, like line of code that you write inside it. So in this case, it's hello world. Uh, we could also do something like one plus one. Uh, it'll ignore that and just, uh, or it won't return that, it'll just return hello world like so. That's basically hello world um, working now. Um, we've done that. So all we had to do was we had to enter IEX dash S um, and then mix. And then it, we have access to our to do's module. And because of that, we have access to hello world. So now that we have this, let's have a look at how to create lists. Um, I thought about just stopping here. However, I thought it might be a bit short for this video and we could also fit in another part. So with lists, list is basically like a collection of data. Like, uh, like if you imagine, um, if you haven't come across the concept of list before, then a list is basically like uh, a shopping list, for example, where you might say apples, um, oranges, etc. And in Elixir, you just define a list like this. So we could have a list of uh, apples, oranges, bananas, say we're having a very healthy um, shopping list. And now if we were to run so we had have to type in recompile because right now, if we were to run to do's dot hello world, we'd still get hello world. It doesn't know that we've changed it. So we hit re recompile and already it's getting quite busy with uh, all these lines and to clear it up, you can just type in clear. And now we can do to do's dot hello world. And now we have our list. So that's really it. Like now we have uh, our list. Uh, we've we've looked at how to like just return hello world or like a string, uh, and we've also returned a list. So yeah, that's that concludes this video. Um, in the next video, we'll start building our to dos app. Right now, it doesn't make sense with hello world and just a list of fruit, um, but we'll dive into that and uh, show how to get up and running with uh, yeah a more full fledged application.